Good morning guys, Unfrequented World, and I'm going to do something today that yesterday I said I wasn't going to do. I purchased my first Sony FE um, mount lens for the A7R 3 yesterday, well I, it came in yesterday, and that's the 28 F2. After I bought this lens, I thought I didn't give the Minolta 28 F2.8 much love. I hardly haven't used it and I've never put it on the a7R 3 and then I got to thinking, what if I just wasted 600 bucks on this lens because I could get very similar quality with my old Minolta lens that I paid $70 for and that was an EX version copy uh, from KEH. So excellent version copy, 70 bucks versus this which was over 600. Now this has a few features on it that are great which is it's nice and light uh, when you go into manual focus, it automatically zooms in. F2, so you're getting a little bit uh, brighter aperture, a little bit uh, smoother bokeh for portraits and things like that. But really, is it worth a $550 premium price? Let's find out. I'm going to take the old Minolta 28, and we're going to shoot some exact comparison shots. So there they are side by side guys and the uh, Minolta 28 here has the LAEA4 on the bottom because that's what you're going to need to use it on the A7R3 so I thought we'd uh, compare the size like that. This one here weighs uh, 7 ounces, 200 grams. The Minolta lens weighs 185 grams so it's a little bit lighter but then you've got to pair it uh, with this which is another six ounces, another 180 some grams. So 12 ounces total versus seven ounces. So right off the bat, you're gonna save a little bit of weight by buying the new lens. Okay, so with the LAEA4 adapter um, and the 28 Minolta loaded on the A7R3, you're limited to focus points grouped right in the middle. Um, there's about 16 of them in there and no touch screen. So you're going to be doing a lot of focusing and recomposing, which is old school, and I'm used to that. I'm fine with that, but don't expect that you're going to have 85% uh, frame coverage or anything like that. So you will be limited to those right in the center there. With the 28 F2 Sony mounted on there, we have full coverage, touchscreen availability, and fairly snappy autofocus. This is not the type of lens that you're going to be tracking kids doing sports and things like that, so I'm not going to worry about testing the tracking, but you will note, just like any other uh, lens that uses the adapters, the old Minolta lenses, you're going to be limited to three frames per second with uh, focus between shots, where the E-mount lenses, you can shoot full 10 frames with focusing between shots. So, again, another advantage for buying an actual E-mount lens. So I just wanted to show you guys that... Um, when we go into manual focus on the a7R3 with an e-mount lens and you go to focus you start to turn the um, focus ring it automatically zooms in and you can change the uh, level of zoom in so it gives you your focus peaking in that it's it's very handy where when we have the 28 uh, Minolta lens on here and the adapter I have to press this button up here to initiate focus zoom and then I turn my focus ring just like we had to do on the A77 II, A99, etc. So it automatically does it with an FE lens. Is that a big deal that it doesn't with the Minolta? Not really because you just push a button to initiate it. So originally when I tried the Minolta uh, 28 2.8 I didn't like the corner sharpness. It was very soft or that's what I told myself anyway. And I didn't like the vignetting on the wide open aperture, the corners, I had to fix, manually fix all of these shots and it just, in my old age I'm getting lazy I guess guys, the less work I have to do the better. So those were the two main complaints I had with the lens but really I don't think I gave this lens enough of a shot initially and I know it's going to be much sharper on the a7R 3 So the important part is this next section coming up where we're going to compare shots from the new Sony 28 F2 and the Minolta 2.8. So I'm gonna to try to shoot a lot of stuff at 2.8 just to compare and see how they stack up against each other. 
but we will do some f2 shots with the new lens as well. I wanted well. to mention that the uh, new Sony uh, 28 f2 lens has a lot of great things going for it, but it's not all peaches and cream. When I picked this lens up yesterday, I've only been using it for two days, two things struck me right off the bat. The first shot I took with this lens, there is an aluminum trailer out in my yard, and I was just testing the lens for sharpness uh, out at the, the maximum infinity, and the trailer was had a halo around it at f2 of green ca really bad ca now it's a bright aluminum trailer and it was a really sunny day but i wouldn't expect that a new 600 hundred dollar marvel should have ca like that so that was disappointing to me the other thing that was disappointing is this focus by wire and what that means it's an electronic focus with these new fe lenses and i do a lot of manual focus well it's slow you put it in manual focus mode, you turn the focus ring, and it takes, I don't know, a nanosecond to catch up to where you're turning. It's not precise like a mechanical focus lens. Uh, it just, it's got that little tiny bit of lag there, and I found that extremely annoying. Um, first of all, I'll just flip back and forth and show you guys. One of these was shot on the Sony, and one was shot on the Minolta. And there is one dead giveaway that we're gonna notice I tried to keep the settings the same for all of these shots, except uh, this first one here. I shot the f2 lens at f2 by mistake instead of f2.8. So, but if you look at the color rendition, you might be able to tell which one is the Minolta. This one here is the Minolta. You can see it's quite a bit warmer than the Sony. The Sony shoots uh, a little bit more blue. Also, if we look in the background at the bokeh here in the um, pantry, you can see there, these are items on the shelf here, and this is a Kleenex box over my daughter's shoulder. That's at f point, f2, and if we go to f2.8 on the Minolta, we can see a slight difference here. A, things are a little more in focus. So if you watch the pantry, I'll just flip back and forth. Not a lot of difference between f2 and f2.8. Let's check the center sharpness. I was trying to focus on her eye. So this is the 2.8 Minolta. And not bad at all. We can see individual eyelashes. And I will show you guys, we'll pull up the image information. This is shot at F2.8, okay? Just to show you an ISO 1600. Both of them will be shot at 1600. And this one here was shot at F2 at 1600 and we can look at the center as well here. Again, uh, pretty sharp. So there's no adapter in here, there's no micro focus adjusting needed. And I have to say that this lens, I have not micro focus adjusted with the LAEA4. Um, so, but I mean, it seemed pretty good without me doing, the, doing that. So we went ahead and did the testing anyway. So very similar in the center. Um, this image here is not a good image to look out in the corners. I did some testing for that. Let's take a look at that right now. Okay, in our second set of test photos here, I've taken a couple of figurines and I placed them down in the bottom section of our image. And again, uh, you'll notice, we'll flip back and forth. One of these is a little brighter than the other one. And that's because we're using the adapter, the LAEA4 adapter. We're losing one third stop of light. So you should be able to tell that this is the Sony and this is the Minolta, just from looking at that. Not a lot of difference in color on this image here. It would be hard to tell. Um, but I'll show you the settings for both of these. They were the same. And we're wide open at ISO 400. Okay, and let's get in here and take a closer zoomed in look. So we are at 100% right here, and this is on the Minolta. So again, I composed a center shot and then recomposed and took the picture. So we'll look here at 100%, and we'll just flip back and forth. They're, they're very close, actually. And I, 
I honestly thought there might be a little more detail in the Minolta, but I, I, it's hard to tell. It's really hard to tell. Some of my test shots, the Sony wins uh, in center for sure. It's a little bit sharper. But out here on the edge, the Minolta actually holds its own. And I'm going to show you guys another image, which kind of proves what I was thinking, that on the outside, at least, the Minolta seems to hold its sharpness a little better. Let's take a look at the next photo. So here's the next test photo, guys. Um, I did, again, use just my eye and uh, tried to line these up, not using a tripod or anything, so they're not 100%. But if we flip back and forth, you guys should see right away the, the main difference that are going to tell us. This one being a little darker and much warmer is the Minolta. Versus this, the Sony, it's a little brighter and a little bluer. Okay, so what we can do is let's zoom in on these uh, flowers here. Again, I shot these wide open. We'll go to 100% and we'll just kind of do a comparison in the center of the frame. So that's the Sony. That's the Minolta. And if you take a pretty good look, you can look in here, there's some detail on the log in behind. They're pretty close. I'll show you guys the image information. Uh, 1250th of a second and 2.8 ISO 100. It's the same for both photos. So in the center, they're very close. Maybe the Sony here might have a little edge of sharpness uh, on this post and things like that, but at 100% pixel peeping, it's very, very hard to tell. But where I did notice a difference, again, I, I zoomed out here and I looked at the roof tiles up in the corner, and uh, we'll just throw that up there, and we'll do the same thing with the Minolta shot. Okay, and if we just flip back and forth, if we look at these lines in between each shingle, that's the Sony shot, that's the Minolta shot, I thought, geez, you know, it almost looks like the Minolta is a little stronger, a little sharper than the Sony. It seems to be some blur. My eye is detecting some blur up here in the corner. We're shooting at 1250, so there should be no motion blur. This just seems tighter. And then I found the spot that actually proves down here in this bottom left corner, we'll look at this turtle. So this is the Sony at 300%. And here is the Minolta at 300%. And we'll just bring this down. Look at the detail on this guy's chest. Watch the detail. So this is the Sony. This is the Minolta. Look at how much more detail and you can see the sharpness showing up in the eye on the Minolta versus the Sony. It's, it's almost faded right out in the eye. So it was kind of a surprise to me, but guys, I'm going to say repeatedly in my testing, my 25-year-old Minolta lens is sharper across the whole frame. So a little surprise there. The center frame definitely goes to the Sony, but out to the outsides, uh, the Minolta. I want to say that I was never happy with the Minolta on my A99 when there was that Bayer filter on there. I just thought this lens was a little soft, but now that I'm comparing it to a brand new Sony $600 lens, it's actually, <laughs> it's holding its own. So I'm going to take that back, guys. Uh, this lens actually holds its own. And in this image here, I just wanted to do a shot with the sun in the frame just to test the flare on the new lens compared to the old lens, and I'll just flip back and forth. You guys probably know, just from looking, which one is which. So obviously, the one with the big red flare is the Minolta, and the new one is the Sony. So we get a little bit of ghosting in here with some light rays coming through the trees, a little bit of lightness in here, but flare is very well controlled with the new lens. But I honestly have to say, I've grown accustomed to this over the last decade with the old Minolta lenses. I don't mind a little bit of redness and a little bit of flare. It can add character to a shot. So in this test shot here, this comparison shot, I wanted to test vignetting in the corners and I also wanted to look for CA in branches. So if I flip back and forth, right away it's evident to me which one is which. This one is much warmer. This is the Minolta. Here is the Sony, 
And if we watch the top right and left corners, I don't really notice any uh, vignetting that's very noticeable in real shooting, real life shooting instances. We could shoot these against a white wall or something, and you probably would see a little bit on the old Minolta for sure, maybe a little bit on the Sony, but in real life, uh, this is wide open. Uh, I should mention, this is f2.8 for the Minolta, and again, I accidentally shot f2 with the Sony, so uh, they're both wide open. Now, I did want to show you something that I found annoying. I accidentally deleted a photo. Here is my aluminum trailer um, that I mentioned earlier in the review. The very first picture I took of my yard the other day, the sun was beating down 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and this trailer was highlighted in absolute green, very thick green CA bars. And it, it astounded me that the Sony had that much CA. And I accidentally deleted that photo. But if we look up here in the trees, I can show you exactly what I was talking about, guys. If we zoom in quite a ways here, we're in 400%, but look at these branches. Look at the CA. It's green. So the uh, Sony 28 F2 uh, presents green CA. Easily fixable in post, but uh, it was a shock to me that there was that much of it available in uh, shots. But I mean, that's been a Sony issue with, you know, my 35 1.4 has horrible CA. And this one, you can take a shot, and if you just turn your camera angle it a little differently, you can take care of quite a bit of the CA just by angling. So it, it can be controlled, but wide open, be aware that it is there. And we'll take a look at the old Minolta here. I, I gotta say, I much prefer the warmth in these old lenses as well. It's just grown on me over the years. But let's look in here for some CA. And there is a tiny, tiny little bit, uh, a little bit of purplish fringing, but it's not really bad. You can see some here. We're zoomed in 800% here, a little bit here. Again, either green or purple can be fixed in post very, very easily. So overall, guys, uh, we can compare in this one. We can look down in the corners too. Let's do a, a sharpness or detail comparison. These are both wide open, as I said. So here's the Minolta. And right in the very extreme corners, obviously, it gets to be quite a bit of a soft mess. Um, but once you're in a little ways, it's not too bad. We can determine, you know, what's a tree, what's a rock, individual sticks of grass, etc. And we can do the same thing here with the Sony. And as I mentioned earlier, I think the Sony, it's actually got more, it almost looks like movement uh, uh, blur, but it's just the way the Sony is rendered. You know, if we look at the Minolta, definitely sharper on that rock than the Sony. So as I said earlier, the Minolta across the frame for sure is sharper. I also took a few different pictures of uh, planters in my yard, but we'll just go over one of them because once you've seen one, you've seen them all. And uh, if we flip back and forth, this is easy to tell. We've lost quite a bit of light here on the Minolta and quite a bit more open on the Sony. They were shot using the exact same settings, um, which were wide open 2.8, ISO 100 at 130, 3,200 of a second. Okay. And what I want you guys to notice is look at the trees up here in the top corner of the image. At 2.8, I was quite surprised that the Sony renders a lot of that out. So the backgrounds do seem to be rendered a little smoother with that lens versus the Minolta, which even though they're both 2.8 at this setting, I'm not sure why, but you can see a lot more individual tree branches back there, which I think I prefer the soft bokeh of the new lens. Uh, but I mean, otherwise I was focused on this flower right here. And if we zoom in 150%, You know, they're very similar. It's kind of hard to see on the same plane right here. And, and I haven't adjusted or fixed any of these, so obviously we could brighten this up very easily, sharpen either one of them that's not as sharp, and we would make these lenses look identical with a tiny bit of uh, post work. So, 
All in all, guys, there really isn't much difference between these two lenses. If you own the old Minolta 28, um, it's actually performing very well compared to the new lens. Uh, Image-wise, guys, there's not, I don't know, there's not a lot to separate, you know, 28-year-old tech versus the new tech. Um, um, so I'm going to say this is the first time that I've had a, a small Minolta lens mounted on the a7R 3 and used it extensively for more than, you know, a few hours. And I've got to say that the LAEA4 for the small lenses, it's, it's not comfortable. I, I've never noticed on the big lenses it actually gives you something to rest the camera on. And you're shooting a big lens, you can reach out and turn the manual focus or the zoom. With these little tiny lenses and you want to get to the, the focus, it's, the adapter is kind of right in the way of your hand. It's, uh, it's not the most comfortable thing ever made for small lenses. And you're, again, you're doubling the weight of the small lens by using that adapter. So in terms of lens performance, guys, the 20-something-year-old Minolta 28 f 2.8 hung in there better than I thought it would. If I was doing video, I think the FE autofocus system would help quite a bit more there in the video side. But in terms of photo side, I didn't use the fancy new autofocus coverage. I stuck to my center points. Occasionally I would touch off to the side and um, without having to recompose. And that's just me, I guess, being old school. Uh, if you're just getting into photography and you were used to a phone or something where you're always touching to focus and then take your picture, maybe the new Sony lens would be more, you would get more use out of that feature. But for me, it sounds great on paper and I thought, ooh, that's something I'd like to use. I didn't use it. On the A7R 3 the old Minolta was much sharper than I've ever seen before. This is the case with all those old uh, Sony Alpha lenses. So if you already own the lens, guys, and you own the adapter, can you justify paying the extra money for the new lens? You can, if, you, if it's a travel thing. Uh, I mean, obviously I did, and I thought these things would be important to me, so I have spent the money to do it. But if you get right down to the brass tacks here and we look at the image quality, which should be the ultimate um, differentiating factor, they're not that dissimilar. You can easily make the old Minolta with a, a sharpened filter and a touch more brightness. You can make these images look exactly like those found on the Sony. Now, I should mention that I did all of my shooting in JPEG. A lot of guys have complained that the Sony lens has really bad distortion when you're shooting uh, raw photos. I've given up on raw, guys. Everything I shoot now is JPEG. Clients don't complain. I can do pretty much anything to the JPEGs, and that's all I shoot. And you get the benefits of the camera is adjusting your distortion and your color and your sharpness for you for a start. So that's an added bonus in my mind. So the final word I guess guys is that does the new Sony completely destroy the 20 something year old Minolta? No, it doesn't. Uh, if you already own this lens then you probably are fine just shooting that lens with an adapter. If you're putting together an FE kit like I am where you want the lightest and uh, you know you're doing a lot of video work and things like that then the new lens definitely has advantages. The price is not bad for what you're getting with that lens. Uh, it's just, uh, I'm a bit of a guy who says I already own this and should I spend this? So I'm, I'm, I guess I'm tight. Let's, I'm cheap, let's put it that way. So even though I'm cheap, I own a lot of lenses, but if you don't absolutely need an FE lens and you already own the old Minolta and you own the adapter, then it's a no brainer. The adapter itself almost costs as much as this lens, so I can't say I can't recommend even going out and buying the old Minolta for seventy dollars because then you still need a four hundred dollar adapter to use it. But if you have the adapter and you're using it on a bunch of other lenses already, then go ahead, go out and pick up the seventy dollar Minolta. You won't be disappointed. But the new Sony, if you're just starting out and you and you don't own old glass, you don't own the adapter, it's a fantastic little lens. Thanks for watching, guys. Tune in next week and we'll cover something else.